Hello, this video is going to walk you through assignment five, the final assignment for Computer Science 340. Now the goal of this assignment is to write a course scheduler that's going to take in a list of courses with prerequisites between the courses and print out a schedule that those courses can be completed in that satisfy all of the prereqs. Now to do this, you're going to need to build a graph to represent the different course and prereq information. And specifically, you're going to build a special type of graph called a directed acyclic graph or DAG, which is a sort of a common subtype of graphs that people talk about. So it's directed, that means that all of the edges have a specific direction that they're moving in. And it's acyclic, which means if you remember that there's no cycles in the graph. And the reason this is important for what we're doing is because the edges in the graph are going to represent the prerequisites and the nodes in the graph are going to represent the courses. So for instance, in computer science, we have computer science 110 and then computer science 220, where 110 is a prereq for 220. And so the way that that's going to be represented in the graph is by having nodes for 110 and 220 and an edge going from 110 to 220. And it needs to be directed because 110 being a prereq for 220 is not at all the same thing as 220 being a prereq for 110. So the edges have a specific direction. And it's also important that it's acyclic because if there was a cycle in the graph, that would mean like one course is the prereq for, course A is a prereq for course B, course B is a prereq for course C, and then course C is a prereq for course A. If you have any kind of loop like that, then it wouldn't actually be possible to complete the courses, right? It, it wouldn't make sense to have it like that. So what you're gonna do for this assignment is take as input the list of the courses and the prereqs between them. Then you're going to build a graph structure out of that, and then you're going to figure out a schedule that consists of a list of classes such that if you take them in that order, it'll satisfy all the prereqs. In order to do that, you're going to implement an algorithm called topological sorting. And so topological means sort of like uh, taking the flow of things into account, I guess, I guess you can say. Um, you can think of the courses as like flowing through the graph from the beginning to the ending point. And so this video will talk about the assignment in a little more detail as we look at the, the page for it. And I'll also go over this topological sorting algorithm. So let's take a look at that. All right, so as I said, DAGs are an important type of graph. Those are directed acyclic graphs. And we are going to use a DAG to represent the course and prereq info that's going to be needed for this program. So here's a DAG showing the required classes in the computer science major. We have 110, which leads to 220 and 284. 220 can lead to 225 or 240. 240 leads to all these other classes, and you can see how it kind of flows through the major like this. So again, it being directed is important because 110 being a prereq for 220 is not the same as the edge going the other way. And also it being acyclic is important because if there was an edge taking us back from, let's say 340 back to 110, that would mean in order to complete 110, you need 340. But in order to complete 340, you need 225, which needs 220, which needs 110. And so there'd be like an endless loop and you can never actually take any of those classes. So this being a DAG is really important. So for the assignment, what you're going to do is you're going to read in this DAG. So let's see the format that it's stored in. All right, so we have a couple of example files down here. This one, cpsc.txt, is the text representation of the graph that I just showed you. So the first line of input is the number of courses in the graph, and in this case it's 11, and then it lists all of the courses on one line. And on each line you have the name of the course, which you can assume is gonna be four letters and then three numbers just like this. Then you have the number of prerequisites for that course, and then separated by a space, you have the names of each of those courses. So 340 has three prereqs, 240, 225, and 284, whereas CPSC 110 has no prereqs at all. Of course, we have to have something with no prereqs to get us started. 225 has one prereq, which is 220, 430 has two, 350, and 340, and so on and so forth. You can kind of see how this works. Now, in order to read in this file, you need to basically make two passes because when you see this first line, that says 340 has three prereqs. At that point, you can't really put these edges in because you don't know about these courses. And so I think the easiest way to do it is read through the file one time and just read the first thing in there, which is the course name. 
and make nodes for all of those names. So in the first pass, you'll make the 11 nodes. And then I would suggest doing a second pass where you then process the prereq information. And then you've already seen the node for 240. So you can look up and see what node number it is because it's already in the graph and then add edges for each of these three things here. So that's sort of the first step of this assignment is building your graph up. The second step is doing the topological ordering. And so one possible topological ordering for the computer science major courses is this, 110, then 284, then 220, 240, 326, 225, 350, 305, 340, 430, 405. Of course, there isn't just one correct answer, one correct topological ordering for this graph. It's possible, for example, that we could have taken 220 first and then 284. So your goal is to produce one correct topological ordering. And you do that by following this algorithm called topological sorting, which is given here. And so let's run through this algorithm on an example graph and see how it works. So let's go through this example graph here with this algorithm. Rather than do computer science again, I came up with a simple graph for the basket weaving major. So we have basket weaving 101 and 102, both of which you have to take before going into 201. Then when you take 201, that opens up basket weaving 300, 305, and 310, all of which you need to take to get into basket weaving 460, which I guess is like the senior capstone in basket weaving or something. Then we have this basket weaving 120, which you got to take, but it's not connected to anything else. It has no prereqs and it doesn't open up anything else after you take it. So in this algorithm, there's two other data structures that are being used. One is the ordering, which is going to be the eventual answer, the actual list of classes that you can take in order. And then we have the active set, which is the list of classes that you can take now based on what courses you've already completed. These can both be just like array lists or arrays or linked lists. Any sort of like linear data structure is fine. So the first step is to set the ordering to empty. I guess that would happen like automatically if you're using an array list or something. Then the second step is to find the nodes with no edges coming into them and call these the active set. So this is the set of classes that you can take right off the bat because they have no prereqs. You'll have to scan through the graph to see that. And right now it's 101, 102, and 120. Then we go into step three and it says, while there are nodes in the active set, we're going to do these steps. And so there are nodes in the active set now. So we pick a node from the active set and move it to the ordering. It doesn't matter which one if there's more than one. So let's pick 101 and move it to the ordering. So once we've done that, what we do is we do step 3.2 here and we go through each edge coming out of this graph and we remove the edge from the graph. So that will remove this edge coming out of basket weaving 101 and going into 120 like that. We actually change the graph as we're doing this process. And then we check if the destination of that edge, basket weaving 201, we check if that has no edges coming into it now. And if so, that means we can take that class. So we put it in the active set, but that's not yet the case. We still have an edge coming in here. So then we're done with that and we go back to the top of the loop. We still have nodes in our active set. So we take out the next one, which we'll do them in order and that'll be 102. So we move that into the ordering. Then for each edge coming out of 102, we delete the edge. So this one is going to go away. And now we check if the destination of that edge has no edges coming into it, which is now the case. 201 has no edges entering it. So we add that to the active set because we can now take that class. Then we go back to the top of the loop and move a node N from the active set to the ordering. That'll be 120 next. Then we look and see if there's any edges coming out of it, but there aren't, so we don't move forward with that at all. Then we go back to the top of the loop. We have one node in our active set, so we're going to schedule that one. Then we look at the edges coming out of that node, which is 201. So we're going to remove this edge, and that makes 300 become active, so we're going to put that in our active set. Then we remove the edge coming out of 201 and going into 305. That likewise makes 305 active, so we add that to the active set. And the same thing for 310, right? We get rid of this edge here going into 310 and add that to the active set as well. So now when we go back to the top of the loop, we can pick the next node out of here, which will be 300. So now once 300 has been scheduled, we're going to remove the edges leaving 300, which will be for the one going into 460. But as of yet, we still have edges going into 460, so we can't put that in the active set yet. So next we go ahead and we schedule 305. 
And after we do so, we look at all the edges coming out of 305 and remove them. So that gets rid of this edge between 305 and 460. Once we do that, we check if there's no edges coming into 460 now, but that's not the case. There still is one. So then we'll go back to the top of this loop again and see that there is still a node in our active set. So we move one of the nodes into the ordering, which is 310. Then we'll remove the edges coming out of 310, which is this edge here. So we'll take that off. And now 460 has become active because there are no edges entering it. So we add 460 into the active set. Then we go back to the top of the loop. There is one node in the active set, which is 460. So we take that out and add it to the ordering, which gets us here. Then we go back to the top of the loop and see that the active set is empty. So we break out and go to step four. Now we see if there's any edges left in the graph and there aren't, so we know that we're done. If there was an edge still, then it would have been the case that we must not have scheduled that node because every time we schedule the node, we remove all of the edges coming out of it. So if something still has edges, that means we missed one of the nodes in the graph. Otherwise, this topological ordering here is correct and has all of the nodes and doesn't violate any of the prerequisites. It's a relatively straightforward algorithm. I hope it's sort of easy to understand once you see an example of it. The big thing is keeping track of the graph and the array list. The one thing you'll have to do is deal with the edges coming out of the nodes that you schedule. So it's easiest to do this with an adjacency matrix. So you can base your code off of this graph.java, which has a directed but unweighted graph based on an adjacency matrix. So inside of here, we have the matrix actually being stored as booleans because there's no weights to these edges. It doesn't, there's, there's no weight associated with the prereq. It's just, is there a prereq, yes or no? And if we scroll down, you can see it's a directed graph because the edges only go in one direction from a node to a node. So you can modify this graph however you see fit, but it should be a good starting point for you. Then the file name for the input will be given as a command line parameter. Read the courses into the graph, as I said, and I think it's easier to do it in two passes, like I mentioned, one to add the nodes and then a second one to add the edges. Then you'll do the topological sorting on the graph. And if there is a valid ordering, you should print it out. And if there's not, you should print out, hey, this is impossible, there's no way to do it. So we have a couple of example files to deal with. We have the cpsc.txt, which I already showed you. Then we have cyber.txt, which is the required classes in the cybersecurity major, which both of these should, of course, have valid solutions. Then we have this one called impossible.txt, which you can use for testing whether your algorithm correctly detects when there is no solution. There is no solution to this because Computer Science 110 requires Computer Science 240 making this not a DAG, but actually a cyclic graph, in which case there is no solution to this. All right, so as you're working on this, like always, if you run into any problems, please just let me know. Thank you.